They say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And from the drama we've seen in the video game industry over the past few years, that's certainly true. But rather than all the brouhaha journalists cause in the industry, what about the poor old game developers? If it's not poor reviews or terrible sales causing these poor guys to go out of business, it's the commissioning publisher themselves totally destroying their operation, with some incredibly insane reasons sometimes. So this episode, we take a look at these conniving commissioners, these double-crossing deans, and these asinine administrators. Some of which you'd have so little faith in, you'd think the project was run by... Um... Oh, arse. If only there was some relevant video game creator I could insert here for a joke. Oh. But, hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five times publishers royally screwed over game developers. But who could I put in there? Oh. For several years now, the console market has been dominated by two of the world's biggest technology companies, Japanese innovator Sony and Bill Gates' American dream, Microsoft. So you would think that with the spotlight on them constantly, these industry giants would stay whiter than white, wouldn't you? Well think again, because it's stories like this one that show just how the Xbox creators got the nickname Microsoft. In January 2013, CEO of Gas Powered Games, Chris Taylor, revealed that Microsoft had left his company high and dry after the cancellation of several projects with him, and being left no other option than to seek money via crowdfunding to get them out the door. It was either that, or close down the company completely, which he was even more reluctant to do. With hits under their belt such as the Dungeon Siege series, Age of Empires Online, and Supreme Commander, you would think they would be more than safe, but clearly not. Chris Smith even went as far as to direct the following expletive laden Matrix quote in Microsoft's direction in reference to their creative differences that led up to the breakup. Fuck bending the spoon with their mind, they'll just snatch it out of your hand, bend it in half and then stuff it up your ass. However, Four days after launching a Kickstarter for PC game Wildman in January 2013, Gas Power Games laid off over 40 employees, putting the company's entire fate in the success of their crowdfunding efforts. On February 11, 2013, Gas Powered Games cancelled their Kickstarter project, just four days before it was due to finish, announcing that they would focus their attention on other ways to keep Gas Powered Games running. Three days later, Wargaming.net announced that they were in talks to purchase the company. Gas Power Games was then absorbed into Wargaming.net to become Wargaming Seattle, ending Gas Powered Games' 15 year run as an independent studio. Thanks, Microsoft! From current industry leaders Microsoft to the original gaming powerhouse that started it all, Atari. In 1996, the situation was extremely grim for the once great company. Their Jaguar console had bombed spectacularly and they were left with a tough decision to make. Fresh off the back of winning a $60 million lawsuit against Sega for various patent infringements, Jack Tramiel, owner of Atari, needed to decide whether to keep throwing money at the Jaguar and hope it would eventually come good, or pocket the cash and exit the volatile console market altogether. Much to many people's anger, he chose the latter, and in 1996 it was announced that Atari would be entering into a reverse merger with hard drive manufacturer JTS Storage. As part of this agreement, the shareholders of Atari insisted that the new company continue support for the Jaguar while it was still a commercial product for the next two years. Atari still had plenty of Jaguar games in the evaluation phase that would be quick and easy to get out the door, but didn't really have any wish to do so, so they struck up a deal with well-known mail order specialists and video game publishers, Telegames, who had been one of the Jaguar's biggest supporters. This deal meant that Atari would hand over a number of unreleased games to Telegames to publish over the next two years, 
effectively keeping to the promise of the shareholders agreement and enabling them to wipe their hands of the Jaguar completely. The big problem with this was that they didn't actually tell the developers of many of these games that this was their intention. One such product was Zero Five, an incredibly impressive 3D polygon space shooter that remains one of the Jaguar's most impressive games. Developed in the UK by Caspian Software, the closure of Atari Corporation and the cancellation of all products had pushed the company into shutting down. So owner of Caspian Software, Matthew Gosling, was pretty shocked to find out that his game was available to buy, as he explains. There was a milestone due when Atari received the beta version, and they didn't want to pay it. All of a sudden they decided they didn't like aspects of the game that had been in there since day one. And unless we completely changed everything, they wouldn't accept it as a beta version. They kept us hanging on for a month, coming back to us with utterly ridiculous bugs, and in the end, the company couldn't carry on, and it was just put to sleep. Then a couple of months later, I nearly had a heart attack when I saw people online talking about Zero Five being published by Telegames. We thought that someone might have just spread some bullshit rumour, but the Telegames website suggested otherwise. We had absolutely no idea that this had happened, we were not consulted at all, and we were still not getting paid for it. Atari maintained that it was not a beta and sold it to Telegames on the understanding that it was an unfinished product. This doesn't stop Atari from getting a royalty on sales of the unfinished product, of course, but that royalty was so embarrassingly low that if they're that fucking desperate, I say that they're welcome to it as far as I'm concerned. The money doesn't really bother me, it's the principle, but hey, who gives a shit? I got my big break into the games industry and Atari are welcome to their $1.50 per cart. So Atari really went from hero to zero five with that one. <laughs>
Hop across the pond to the US and California based developers, interesting software, were just about to sign a publishing deal for their various VIC-20 games with Tronix, a division of the largest software distributors in North America, Softcell. However, when the company started doing due diligence on interesting software's products, they found that all their games had already been published by Rabbit Software over in the UK. As it turns out, Rabbit had bought Interesting Software's games via mail order and simply put them out as their own, assuming they wouldn't get caught. But as we all know, liars and thieves always get caught out in the end. Isn't that right, Peter? So Rabbit Software quickly dispatched one of their directors to the US on damage control. He pleaded ignorance to the whole affair and promised to stop selling the pirated games. Interesting Software, however, never got any royalties from the many illegal sales. Interesting Software went on to have a pretty decent amount of success through their deal with Tronix. But Rabbit Software, however? Well, they filed for bankruptcy in 1985 and were snapped up by Richard Branson's Virgin Games shortly afterwards, where they were used as a label to publish their budget games before disappearing completely not long after. So you could say the Rabbit was well and truly put back in the hat. Of course we've saved the best until last, and this story will leave you with a feeling of total disgust against a huge company that forms such a huge part of popular culture. We all know who 20th Century Fox are, the historic movie and TV production company that have been in existence making our favourite big screen pictures since 1935. And since 1985, they have been part of Rupert Murdoch's media empire that includes Sky Television, The Sun newspaper, and of course, Fox News. But in 1982, Fox saw an opportunity to enter the ever-expanding video games sector and leverage some of their big-name film properties into new markets. However, they had no prior experience in this area, so chose external companies to provide the software they required. Step forward California-based Sirius Software, who were already experiencing tremendous success on the home computers of the time, setting several sales records with games such as Gorgon and Space Eggs for the Apple II. Producing titles and hot properties such as MASH, Fantastic Voyage, Flash Gordon and Porkies, Sirius Software's games were proving to be enormously successful for Fox. So when the North American video game crash hit the industry hard in 1984, Fox were expected to be one of the companies to survive. But almost overnight, Sirius were informed that 20th Century Fox video games was being liquidated with immediate effect, leaving the company owed around $14 million in unpaid royalties. Sirius Software were left in a huge hole with nowhere to go. And under US law, they weren't even able to pursue Fox Video Games' parent company. Owner Jerry Jewell was left understandably upset about this situation, as in an interview with Retro Gamer magazine in 2014, he was quoted as saying, Fox Video Games were a bunch of conniving assholes. At last estimate, they owed us $14 million, which we were unable to collect when they shut down the company and filed for bankruptcy. That level of loss was a death knell for us. When they didn't pay, Bank of America revoked our line of credit and seized all of our goods. But they were another bunch of conniving assholes. In the end, through the legal fees and debts, I lost everything, including my personal relationships that are still not resolved. Very sad indeed. Well, all we can say to that one is a big fox you. Hello you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now.